while I've got you here, let's talk about the article. You know the one. Tyler Dunn, formerly of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, drops this big piece in Bleacher Report about the demise of the Green Bay Packers, the last days of Mike McCarthy. The last days apparently reach back pretty far. In fact, if you ask Ty Dunn in this article, they reach back to the moment he was hired. That's when things went wrong with Aaron Rodgers. But I don't really want to talk about the contents of this article. I want to talk about how we should feel about it, how we think about it. And I would like to introduce you to the so what test. I may have talked about this before, but this was something really great that one of my professors did in college. Took a radio news writing class my, my junior year of college. And in this class, we had to pitch stories. That's what you should do before you work on something. You should, you know, make sure your thinking is good. Make sure it's a story worth pursuing. In this class, we had to pitch our ideas to the professor. And if he signed off on them, we would pursue them as though they were normal stories and insert them into a radio broadcast that we did, a radio news broadcast that we did once a week. We did a 30-minute news show about stuff that went on on campus once a week. He had this thing called the so what test. We would pitch the idea that we had for a story, and he would ask one question, if it was a bad idea. So what? Asking so what about a story helps you identify stuff that doesn't really matter. If you're reporting about something and you can't demonstrate to somebody why it's important, it's probably not something that anybody needs to know about anyway. Sometimes it's hard to identify the so what. Sometimes you really have to dig people, dig deep to show people why they should care. But those are the good stories. But the bad stories are ones that are really more headlines than actual stories. And I think that might be what we've got on our hands here. Think about the conclusions of this piece. There are four, really, I think. Maybe five. Maybe the overarching conclusion is the Packers should have done better than they have 2011 to present. Okay, that's true. But then you've got revelations such that such as Mark Murphy was a little bit disconnected from what was going on in his organization. Ted Thompson's draft and develop strategy didn't necessarily work as well as it should have, and he probably should have done some other things. Mike McCarthy may have let the game pass him by, and Aaron Rodgers is hard to work with. What about those things did we not know before? I mean, it's not even six months ago that Sports Illustrated's Monday Morning Quarterback site did a big deep dive on a lot of this similar stuff. And for that matter, if, they've got, if they'd gotten to the Super Bowl in 2014 or in 2016, does anybody really care about any of this? We're playing the results really hard here. And related to that, it's not really a damning thing to not be liked by your coworkers. That's true for Aaron Rodgers. That's true for Mike McCarthy. That's true for Ted Thompson. Their job is to not make friends. Their job is to win football games. And the Packers won a lot of football games from 2010 when they won the Super Bowl to now. They've won a lot. Even these last couple of years, they are not at the very bottom of the league. So what does knowing all this stuff do for us now? We didn't learn really anything new. We just learned some new details to add some color to what we knew already. And to that point, even if we were learning some wholly new things, some stuff that really redefined this era, what does it do for us? Mike McCarthy is gone. He's been fired. Ted Thompson is gone. Put out to pasture in early 2018. Mark Murphy is more active. Aaron Rodgers has a new coach to work with. Everything anyone could have wanted has happened. Dom Capers is even old news now. It may not have happened when people wanted it. It may not have happened as soon as it should have happened, but it happened. So, so what with this article? Does any of this change the outcome of the 2014 NFC Championship game? Does any of this make the Packers roster good enough to compete with the Atlanta Falcons in 2016? What if we gain from this? What is this news story, in heavy quotes, do for anyone? Other than just stir things up even more. Seems like all we're doing here is just rolling around in the muck. And Tyler Dunn is the one who led us there. 
But are we really just doomed to rehash the circumstances of the loss in Seattle again and again and again? I sure hope not. I don't want to live that way. I don't want to think about the Packers that way. I think that's just a waste of all of our time. So looking at this article, I just have to ask, so what?